Mysteries with video clues can be some of the most disturbing, as it makes it easier to imagine being in the terrifying situation. However, that doesn't always mean the mystery is easier to solve, as not even videos reveal the whole truth. Number 5 London is one of the most surveillance camera covered cities in the world, and it was a CCTV camera on the back of a London bus that captured the moment an unknown man pushed a woman into traffic without a second thought. The footage quickly went viral after being released by police, as people marveled at how close the woman came to losing her life. Thankfully, nobody was harmed but police still didn't know who the man in the video was. It was about 7.40 am on May the 5th, 2017, the beginning of the morning rush to work. A few people could be seen walking along Putney Bridge, which crosses in West London. One of the pedestrians was a jogger running in the same direction the bus was going. Behind him was a second double-decker bus. As the man ran, he passed another man walking in the opposite direction without an incident. Then a woman came into frame. The woman got a little too close to the jogger for his liking it seemed, as he changed direction slightly in order to push her out of his way. The woman stumbled and fell into the path of the bus which had to swerve to avoid hitting her. The bus driver was a 45 year old man named Oliver Salbris who believed he would have definitely struck the woman had he not swerved at the last moment. Oliver stopped the bus to make sure the woman was okay. The jogger did not stop and continued on his route without even looking back. 15 minutes later, while the woman was still being checked over, the jogger came back running in the opposite direction. He hadn't come to help. It seemed as if he was simply heading back the way he had came after his morning exercise. Police were notified immediately, but it wasn't until after three months later that the CCTV pictures of the man were made public. A handful of people were arrested, including one man who'd been in the US at the time of the incident, but none were the culprit and nobody was ever charged. Police followed hundreds of leads generated by the footage being released, but none brought them any closer to finding the culprit who was described as a white male in his 30s with brown hair and brown eyes. The case has now been closed and there's little chance the mysterious man will ever be identified. Number 4 There have been many bank robbers dubbed the cowboy bandit over the years. Police or the media give them the nickname based on the hats they wear while conducting the robbery, or occasionally the boots. Usually, the culprit is identified pretty quickly. 10 gallon hats aren't as good at obscuring the face as the criminals would like to believe, or else they were caught for some other reason. But the original cowboy bandit of the late 1980s remains unidentified to this day. The story started in September of 1987. A well-dressed man walked into a bank in Washington. Contrary to what you might imagine by the name Cowboy Bandit, he wasn't wearing a hat of any kind, but his cowboy boots were noticed by staff members and other witnesses. A robbery went on without a hitch. He showed the bank employees a police scanner he'd managed to get a hold of. Any call to the police, even a silent alarm, and he would hear it, and he warned them not to cross him. Everyone in the bank was shepherded into the bank vault, where he forced the employees to empty cash drawers. He left no fingerprints and wasn't even caught on any of the bank cameras. From the time he entered the bank to the time he left with more than $100,000, less than five minutes had passed. Nobody saw his getaway, and by the time police were contacted, he was long gone. $100,000 wasn't enough for the bandit though, and a year later, he robbed another bank in the same area. This one didn't go quite to plan though. He took $14,000 from the bank, 
but among the money was a dyed pack. Dye packs are remote-controlled devices that are usually set off after they pass a trigger in the door. When set off, a permanent dye covers the money, marking it as stolen and drawing attention to the incident. Sure enough, the pack was set off seconds after the robber left the bank, and witnesses outside were able to give the police a description of the criminal and the robber. Another robbery in the same area, within a few months, gave police more of a description, and they released a sketch, but in all three cases, he avoided the cameras. Finally, in June of 1988, police managed to get an image of the bandit on camera. He tried to rob a nearby federal credit union, which was housed in the same building as one of the banks he'd previously targeted. While the tellers were putting money into the bag, one took money from a bill trap, which activated a silent alarm, and importantly turned on the security cameras. Surveillance footage showed the man who was white between 35 and 45 and somewhere between 6 feet and 6 2. Again, he managed to escape before police arrived, but with the video evidence, they were able to go to the public for help solving the case. It was also connected to three unsolved robberies in Arizona. The Cowboy Bandit was featured in an episode of Unsolved Mysteries in 1990, but it wasn't enough to deter the criminal. Two years later, he returned to the same bank where he'd been caught on camera and held it up again. So far, that appears to be the last of the criminal, as no other crimes have been tied to him. Number 3 Usually, traffic cameras are simply used to monitor congestion. At most, the biggest thing that's recorded is an accident. But in February of 2021, a traffic camera in Ohio captured the moment someone fired into a car driven by Robert Fentress. Robert was a 33-year-old father of three who was born and raised in Cleveland. He worked as a nursing assistant with aspirations of someday becoming a nurse. He was on his way to work on the evening of February 1st, driving along the I-480 westbound. It was a trip he'd done countless times before. As he was driving, another car pulled out into the inside lane. The driver even used his turn signal. Shortly after the car pulled alongside Roberts, Robert began to veer to the left through two lanes of traffic before coming to a stop at the side of the road. The second car drove off as if nothing happened. A traffic camera on a bridge over the motorway filmed the incident. What isn't clearly shown in the grainy footage is what caused Robert to veer off. 14 shots were fired into the car. At least one met their mark and Robert passed away at the scene. According to police, the incident took place at just before 7 p.m. and other drivers rang 911 to report the incident. More than an hour later, the local police department called for assistance. So far, the only real clue police have to go on is the camera footage, which was only released a month after the incident. They called on the public to help identify the vehicle. Police believe Robert was targeted, though why is another matter. It's not known if he had any enemies, he had a respectable job, and no known criminal connections. It's possible this was a case of mistaken identity and Robert wasn't the intended victim. Whatever the case, there's been little progress since the incident. Number 2 The disturbing murder of fitness instructor Terry Missy Bevers remains unsolved five years after her body was found by students. Missy was 45 years old and a married mother of three living in Red Oak, Texas in 2016. She was an active member of the community and taught a morning fitness class of the local church. It was as she prepared for this class that someone took her life. Usually, the class took place outside, but the weather forecast for April 18th predicted rain. Missy posted on her Facebook page that the session would go on rain or shine. She arrived at the church an hour before her 5 a.m. class was due to start, but she wasn't alone. 
Shortly after Missy arrived, a motion-activated camera picked up a disturbing individual walking through the church hallways. The person was dressed in head-to-toe SWAT gear, which police believe was makeshift and not official gear. They carried a hammer at their side as they walked through the halls, opening doors without any apparent reason, seeming to look for something or someone. At one point, the person uses the hammer to smash a window, which police believe was an attempt to make it look like that was how they'd broken in. The camera didn't pick up the unknown intruder meeting Missy. If it did, the footage hasn't been acknowledged or made public. It also didn't show the individual leaving, but they were gone by the time Missy's students arrived for their 5 a.m. class. The students found Missy unresponsive, and she had head wounds believed to have been caused by the hammer. She would succumb to her injuries, and police launched an investigation. The only real clue police have is the CCTV from inside the church, though they did also release footage from a nearby sporting goods store. It showed a single car driving through the parking lot two hours before the attack. The police believe the car may have been connected, but the driver has never been identified. Of course, the figure in the church kept their face hidden, and police aren't sure if it was male or female. They estimate the figure was between 5'2 and 5'7, and pointed out their distinctive walking gait, which they hoped might lead to the figure's identification. Police are pretty sure this wasn't a case of robbery gone wrong, as nothing was taken and it seems Missy was specifically targeted, though by who is still being speculated. Missy's husband, Brandon, came under scrutiny after the attack. The couple had apparently been going through financial and marital problems. However, he was on his annual fishing trip on the day of the incident and was hundreds of miles away. Brandon's father has also been accused, as he matched the height of the intruder and had the same walking style. He also had an alibi though, and was out of state, and Brandon believes the culprit was a woman. Police have received thousands of tips, but the case remains unsolved. Number 1 Georgina Garsala was a 30-year-old woman of two, living in Worthing, England, when she disappeared on March 7, 2018. There have been numerous sightings of her in the years since, though police have never been able to confirm any, and what happened to her remains a mystery. Georgina was living with her mother at the time of the disappearance, as she'd recently broken up with her boyfriend, the father of her children. The morning she was last seen, she told her mother her phone was acting up and she was going to stop into a store to get it fixed on her way to the job center. Her mother lent her an old phone in the meantime, and Georgina asked to borrow some money. And at first, her mother hadn't wanted to give it to her, but eventually she did. Georgina left the house at around 9 a.m. and stopped by a small business to ask about getting her phone fixed. They talked for a short while before Georgina left, presumably to go to the job center. But she never made it to the center. It was a while before anybody realized Georgina was missing. She'd had plans to go see her father that evening, but he never questioned it when she didn't show up. Her mother figured she was probably staying at a friend's house and thought Georgina was upset with her because she'd been reluctant to lend her money. A few days later, Georgina's ex-boyfriend contacted her mother to ask if she'd heard from her, as he hadn't been able to get through. After ringing around and discovering no one knew where she was, her family contacted police. Police were slow to get involved. They discovered her phone hadn't been used since the morning of her disappearance. And eventually, CCTV footage from the store was made public in hopes someone might know what had happened. It wasn't until weeks after the disappearance that police checked her bank account realizing that there'd been no activity since that day. Strangely, years later, Georgina's mother noticed an account linked to a handheld games console Georgina had with her when she disappeared that had been billed for $7.99. It's not known if this was an automatic renewal of some kind, or if this was new activity. If it was an automatic renewal, Georgina's family have questioned how police never noticed the billing before. One of the main criticisms of the police was how long it took to gather CCTV evidence, 
and some evidence was even lost before it could be reviewed. For a long time, the CCTV image from the store was the last images of Georgina, and it was assumed something must have happened to her on her way to the job center. But earlier this year, police revealed new CCTV images recorded in the city center. At around 4 p.m. that afternoon, Georgina was seen talking to a woman. The new footage turned the investigation on its head and led to more questions. Was the reason she didn't show up for the meeting the same thing that led to her disappearance? Did she say anything to the woman that might have explained her mindset? We may never know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.